Hello to both students in Year 11 and their families. We wanted to take the opportunity just to talk to you about what's going to happen next half term and also the awarding of your grades. But before we go into the detail of that, I just wanted to say well done. I can't stress how impressed we've been with your return to school and how positive you have been. And we know that it was very difficult for all of us, for all year groups, to continue our learning online. But you have been amazing. And the teachers have been very positive, both about your attitude and effort during the lockdown and when we weren't in school, but even more so on your return. So I just wanted to say, well done. And also to take the time to just reassure you we all know that it's disappointing that you're not able to sit the actual GCSE examinations, but be reassured, we know you. We know you as students, we know you as individuals. And as Mr Ryle will go on to explain, we are confident that we will have plenty of evidence to provide you with the GCSE grade that you deserve, that your efforts over the last 18 months deserve and we know that we're good at doing that because we pride ourselves on knowing our students and also enabling them to progress onto the next stage of their journey and that's been recognized by Ofsted in the past and also tr the trust when they've come to visit us so yet again be reassured be confident and in the remaining time in school Work hard, because everything you do now counts, just like everything you've done in the past counts also. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs Yap. So, a little bit more detail on what that means for you as students in Year 11, and the information that we're going to be collecting to give you the recognition that you deserve for all your hard work. So, four of these are principles. Um, so, first of all, we're only going to be assessing you on what has been taught. So please do not be anxious about parts of the curriculum that you think I missed that because I was absent or I just really didn't follow that at that time. So the teachers have very carefully assessed what it is that they are going to be testing you on. So that means that it won't be the whole curriculum. Um, for example, in history, there's a unit that's been taken out. We've known that for a number of months. So it won't be the full range of content that previous year groups have been assessed on. Secondly, it will be a range of evidence. And the really important message is there is not one piece of evidence that will determine your grade. What that means for you as a student is you do not need to be anxious about whether that was a mock in year 11 that you were disappointed with, maybe you had a slow start in year 10, or maybe through no fault of your own, you do miss one of the assessments that's happening around now. So there's no one piece of evidence that will determine what your grade is. There's a word they use called holistic. Holistic means to look at everything as a whole. So you'll see that beautiful pie chart just to the side. So that just represents the range of evidence that might be used. For example, there might be information from March of year 10 that's really helpful for your teachers to see how well you did before the first lockdown even started. It might be your September assessment or your year 11 mocks. Those assessments that were done in very different conditions still give us useful information. Your teachers made a prediction of what you're likely to get in December, and that's available to you on Go For Schools. That gives you an indication of roughly where your grades might end up. So that gives you an indication whether or not there's areas that you think, actually, do you know what, I'd like that grade to be different, or it might give you some reassurance that based up until November, my teachers are confident of that level of performance. Then we get onto something called fresh evidence. So we know that almost all of you had a very positive experience during the most recent lockdown. You worked hard at home, you were well supported by teachers. So this fresh evidence is really valuable to us in determining the best grade we think that we can award you. But it's not the only piece of information. It isn't like usual years. It's not like usual years in lots of ways, but especially for exams, your grade will not only be determined by what happens after Easter. It's the whole range of evidence that we've collected over time. In lots of subjects that might be portfolios of work, for example in arts and textiles. It might be that it's coursework that you've done, tasks that you've done along the way in BTECs. So there's a whole range of evidence that we use to then reach a judgement. 
The judgments are made by schools, and we say schools, not teachers, because teachers don't work in isolation. It will be the school, and typically the department, that looks at that evidence and reaches a fair and reasonable judgment on your performance. It's then carefully checked. So we check it against previous years, we check it against other schools, we check to make sure that it makes sense for you as a learner. So the student support team will check just to look for any patterns if maybe you've missed particular parts of school to make sure that we've taken account of that. It will be checked against any learning support that you've received. So if that's you, we'll make sure that the coloured paper, the extra time, someone to read or to write for you will be available during these fresh assessment periods. And then there's four important dates. Most of this fresh assessment will happen for the three weeks following Tuesday the 4th of May. Once we've had that period, you'll be in school until we expect just before half term. So that's the normal time when Year 11 will finish attending all their lessons. There might be a small number of you where we do need some more evidence. For example, if perhaps you've missed one of those fresh assessment periods, or we just need some more evidence to support our judgment. But for almost all of you, you will be ending your time attending lessons just before May half term. The next date is the 18th of June. The 18th of June is the date that schools submit your grades. You then find out what those grades are on the 10th of August. So those are the key dates, those are the principles, it's only what you've been taught, it's a range of evidence, there's not just one piece that determines your grades, it's judgments made by schools, so groups of teachers together, and it's then very carefully checked. So a little bit more detail on each of those. So how are they decided? We consider the evidence, we compare it to other students within school, we compare it to other year groups and we compare it to other schools. So broadly, it will be the same evidence for all the students in a subject. There may be around the edges some exceptions we make. For example, if you had to isolate during a particular period of time or you miss an assessment, we may amend the evidence slightly for some. But broadly, it's the same evidence used for all the students in a subject. We need to make sure that the grades are not only positive, but also really honest. So that means we need to consider what grades have been awarded in previous years. And as Mrs Yap said, this is where it's great that you're here at Thomas Gainsborough School. Because our results across all subjects have been strong, that means we can award you really positive grades. But we also need to make sure that that's not unfair to you. If, for example, we gave you a very high grade and then you made a choice for A-levels or college based on that and found that you weren't well prepared, that wouldn't be us helping you. So the grades will be two things, positive and honest. So the final judgments are made is that word holistic. It looks at everything together. Evidence can be a whole range of things. So it can be your coursework, it can be portfolios of work, like you've done in photography. It can be practicals that have taken place. It can be mock exams and past papers. It could just be internal tests or groups of questions. An example is providing some more resources for us to use for that. So a whole range of evidence we can choose from to give you the fairest grade. It's not determined by any single piece of work. And we've given you examples already of what that might be. Work from year 10, work from September, work from December, and work from that key period starting the 4th of May. So what does that period of time look like? So there are a few exceptions around the edges. The reason these subjects have chosen to give you an additional piece of evidence typically before the 4th of May, is to help spread the work out. What we're not doing is condensing seven weeks' worth of exams into a three-week period. So some subjects, as you'll see on there, English, history, PE, maths, history, geography, health and social care and philosophy, have got some assessments which are taking place just before that window. What that means for you is, it means it spreads that work out. It means they can make use of lesson time in between to help you prepare, just refresh what it is that you remember about particular topics. So it's spread out, but the key period is the three weeks from the 4th of May. We'll be sharing you some information about what that looks like, so you can plan. But the important thing is, this isn't normal exams. So you should not be preparing yourself a rigid revision timetable. It might be there's some subjects you do want to look back through previous topics. Your teacher will tell you what those topics are, but do not feel you need to be preparing in the same way that other year groups have. We think it is good that you do do some revision, but your teachers will guide you in that. So all you need to do is to follow your teacher's instructions on what to prepare and when. 
If you're worried, then speak to somebody. There'll be more information on that in a moment. But just make sure you're communicating with your teacher to find out what should I be doing when, and they will be the best guide for you. So the future. Why do we even do this? It's two reasons. It's the skills that we're developing. The reason that revising and revisiting work is good for you is because lots of these skills are things you will need at college or doing A-levels or at university or on apprenticeships or in employment. You need to be an independent learner. You need to know how you learn best. So the skills that you're developing are really important for you to practice. So we expect that the regular time in school ends just before half term and also other things about the future that really matter. You would have heard about the National Citizenship Service, the NCS. There is a good chance that will run in the summer. You will also find information about yearbooks and hoodies. Prom has a provisional date and so does graduation. That information will be released to you as we're ready. And like everything, we're just waiting to find out what the conditions are that we can operate in safely. So you can start looking forward, we hope, to all the things that make this time of year normally very special for students. So what can you do now? Things you can do at the moment. Remember it's a wide range of evidence that is used. Do not worry about any single piece of assessment. Balance your time. Make sure you are still staying relaxed. You are still enjoying time at home with your family. But also, you can start to refresh yourself on the topics as directed by your teacher. What you are not doing is every page in a revision book. What you are not doing is going through past papers. All you need to do is listen to your teacher and follow their advice on how to revise. And then consider your plans for September. It isn't just getting ready for the end of year 11. It's about you having that clear plan and the support you need to be successful in September, wherever you may choose to study. There'll be more opportunities for you to find out more about sixth form here. Um, we can arrange tasters. We can arrange a little tour around if that's going to be helpful to you. We can also, through the careers team, make sure that you've had the chance to interview well for colleges of your choice. So that's support. Support is available from your tutor, they know you the best, from your teacher who knows you and the subject you're studying. Heads of house and subject leaders can provide additional information. The learning support team is also available to help you prepare and then to do well in those assessments. The learning mentors and the careers team can provide you with support to help you plan for next year. So do keep communicating with us. If you've got specific questions about this process, feel free to email myself or Mrs Yap. So we'll have our email addresses alongside this video. Do ask us any questions you've got to make sure that your child or that you as a student are as well prepared, as confident and as positive as you can be. Thank you, Mr. Ryle. I just want to echo a couple of those points. Just to stress, this is not an exam period. The exams have been cancelled. And like Mr. Ryle said, we are not in any way encouraging you to sit, start revising your whole course. Your teachers will direct revision on specific topics. Nothing more, nothing less. It is not an exam period. We will not be in the main hall. You will be taking those assessments in your normal lessons. And as Mr. Ryle said, they will be spread out because what we also want to do is minimise your stress and your worries about this. And that's why those words, positivity and honesty, you know, we need you to be positive about this process and to trust that we are honest in this process. We want you to get the grades that you deserve. And on that point as well, I just want to echo another thing that Mr. Al said. This is not a grade that is determined by the teacher in, in, in just deciding what they think. There will be a rigorous process of checking. So if you have any queries about uh, the process, please, as Mr. Ryle said, contact ourselves. What we do not want is individual teachers inundated with parental emails about individual student situations. Um, they need to focus on the work they have to do now, so please, any questions to Mr. Ryle and myself. It's really important, you know, to remember that Year 11 have had a difficult two years. We all have. It feel, you know, year 10 was disrupted for them, year 11 has been disrupted for them. And that is why in the judgments we make we will be positive and we will be honest. 
and we know that the young, most of the young people within Year 11 will get the grade that they absolutely deserve because they have worked so well. We've got a quote to finish with, and we like this quote, and I think it's very apt for our young people. The fight is won or lost, far away from witnesses, behind the lines in the gym and out there on the road, long before I dance under those lights. You've put the work in, you will get what you deserve, and you will go on, we know, to greater things. So please be reassured, and also let's be positive that hopefully in the summer, near the end of term, we will be welcoming you all to the graduation ceremony. As Mr. Ryle said, the marquee is booked and the prom venue are booked, and we look forward to seeing you all in your lovely outfits on a glorious summer's evening. Um, let's be positive. It will get better from where we are now. Thank you very much. And um, as Mr. Ryle said, any questions, please direct them to us. Thank you.